Good Monday, everyone. I'm Savage Webb, and welcome to Conversation Daddy News. Glad you all could be with us. Well, it's a brand new day. It's a brand new week. It means it's a brand new opportunity. We did something amazing, and it all begins today. Of course, you have your news headlines coming up on this Monday. I have a message from my book, Warrior That She's a Lip By, and in today's news, you can use hearing part of my conversation with Dr. Leandris LeBird and Taylor Robinson talking about the impacts of cardiovascular disease. You don't want to miss that. Enjoy today's broadcast. For Conversation Daily News, I'm Cyrus Webb with your Monday headlines. In international news, King Charles III breaks silence after cancer diagnosis. Five days after Buckingham Palace announced that King Charles III had been diagnosed with cancer, the monarch released a personal letter to the public. On February the 10th, five days after Buckingham Palace announced the monarch's diagnosis, the 75-year-old released this message. I would like to express my most heartfelt thanks for the many messages of support and good wishes I received in recent days, the king wrote, as seen in a post shared on the royal family's Instagram page, which also featured a 2023 photo of the monarch greeting well-wishers. As for those who have been diagnosed with cancer will know, such kind thoughts are the greatest comfort and encouragement. The monarch continued, It is equally heartening to hear how sharing my own diagnosis has helped promote public understanding and shine a light on the work of all those organizations which support cancer patients and their families across the UK and wider world. My lifelong admiration for their timeless care and dedication is all the greater as a result of my own personal experience. He signed his letter Charles R., his royal cipher, which stands for Rex, the Latin word for king. In more international news, Biden says Israel shouldn't press into Rafah without credible plan to protect civilians. Israel should not conduct a military operation against a Hamas militant group in the densely populated Gaza border town of Rafah without a credible and executable plan to protect civilians, U.S. President Joe Biden told Benjamin Netanyahu on Sunday, the White House said. It was the most forceful language yet from the president on the possible operation. Biden, who last week called Israel's military response in Gaza over the top, also sought urgent and particular steps to strengthen humanitarian aid. Israel's Channel 13 television said the conversation lasted 45 minutes. Discussion of the potential for a ceasefire agreement took up much of the call, a senior U.S. administration official said, and after weeks of diplomacy, a framework is now pretty much in place for a deal that could see the release of remaining hostages held by Hamas in exchange for a halt in fighting. The official who spoke on condition of anonymity to discuss negotiations acknowledged that gaps remain, but declined to give details. The official said military pressure on Hamas in the southern city in recent weeks helped bring the group closer to accepting a deal. In national news, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, and the Kansas City Chiefs are back-to-back Super Bowl champions. Mahomes threw a three-yard touchdown pass to Hardman with three seconds left in overtime, and the Chiefs rallied to beat the San Francisco 49ers 25-22 on Sunday in the second overtime game in Super Bowl history, becoming the first repeat champs in 19 years and ninth overall. With pop star Taylor Swift watching boyfriend Kelsey from a suite, the Chiefs captured their third Super Bowl title in five years and firmly established themselves as a dynasty. R&B star Usher received rave reviews for his halftime show. He emerged at Las Vegas Allegiant Stadium for the 2024 Super Bowl halftime show, seated on a throne, joined by a marching band and a trove of Vegas performers, but stayed at center. It was immediate confirmation of his potential as the ideal halftime performer, one with timeless, well-known hits, masterful choreography, and a devoted audience. In business news, Wall Street waltzes past its latest milestone as S&P 500 closes above 5,000. More gains for U.S. stocks on Friday sent Wall Street to its latest record, milestone, and winning week. The S&P 500 rose 0.6% and finished a day above the 5,000 level for the first time. It's the 10th record in less than a month for the index, which closed its 14th winning week in the last 15 to continue a romp that began around Halloween. The Nasdaq Composite jumped 1.2% to pull within 0.4% of its own all-time high, which was set in 2021. The Dow Jones Industrial Average was a lagger a day after setting its own record. It slipped 54 points, or 0.1%. And finally, in entertainment news, Matthew Vaughn's Argyle takes first place at the box office with $7 million. Matthew Vaughn's Argyle got first place with only $7 million, which brings its running domestic total to $29 million in two weekends. 
Overall, says the Associated Press, is likely to be the slowest weekend of the year to date, with around $40 million industry-wide, down nearly 25% from last year. The big football game isn't entirely to blame either. In the years prior to the pandemic, the same weekend was able to generate over $75 million. That made the top five movies over the weekend. Number one, Argyle with $7 million. Number two, Lisa Frankenstein with $4 million. Number three, The Beekeeper with $4 million. Number four, The Chosen with $3 million. Number five, Wonka with $3 million. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. It's some time for a message from my book, Word That Choose to Live By. Enjoy. Hello, everyone. I'm Cyrus Webb, and welcome to Monday's episode of Word That Choose to Live By. Use today as an opportunity to write a new chapter, one better and wiser than the one before it. Your life is yours to live. Make sure you spend this moment living it. Have an amazing Monday. We are part of my conversation coming up with Dr. Leandris LaBird and Tara Robinson in today's news you can use. Stay with us. You're listening to Conversation Daddy News. For Conversation Daddy News, I'm Summers Webb with your news you can use. Dr. Leandris LaBird and Tara Robinson join me on Conversations Live, the radio show, to talk about the dangers of cardiovascular disease. Here's a bit of our conversation. Thanks for the two of you for the time. Really do appreciate it. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, well, Dr. LeBert, I want to begin with you. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak with you. So I mentioned in my intro, of course, about heart disease being the number one killer of women in this country. But what kind of toll is cardiovascular disease taking on women in this country? Well, as you said, it's, it's the number one killer of all women in this country, killing more women um, than all forms of cancer combined. But the group that's really carrying the biggest toll of this um, of heart disease are, is African-American women. We know that um, African-American women are 60% more likely to have high blood pressure. Um, they experience higher rates of cardiovascular disease, coronary disease, and stroke death um, when we compare their rates to non-Hispanic white women. So this is really a call to action because the good news is that we can reduce um, this toll among black women. And it requires that they participate in taking small steps to really improve their health and also acknowledging that self-care is health care. Such a great point. Tara, I had an opportunity to speak with you, first of all, back in 2022, and you shared a bit of your story. If you don't mind, for our audience, tell us about your own experience with heart disease. Oh, happy to be back. My own experience with heart disease is that April 10th, I had a heart attack. April 11th, I had a heart attack. And April 12th, I had a massive heart attack, which led to sudden death. So I want women to know that the narrative of strong black woman, or if you're internalizing your stress, or just because we look good on the outside doesn't necessarily mean we look good on the inside. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. We thank you all for tuning in to this edition of Conversations Daily News. But back to get on to more awesome news, message from my book, Word That You Use to Live By, and of course, Entertainment Spotlight. And until then, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversations Daily News today. Let us go make today amazing. Take care. <laughs>